everyone, and welcome to another Secrets Behind the Tracks. Today we're going to look at the song Blind Luck from our Resonance album. And I chose this one for a couple reasons. One, this one was one of the first songs that we recorded for for the album. And it was it had a lot of problems, actually. It took a little bit more effort and trial and error for me than uh, some of the other songs. But uh, one thing that's kind of unusual uh, is that we came up with an intro um, based off of, actually Tim came up with this little bass lick and it ended up inspiring me to write the rest of the song. But So we had this intro designed around his bass lick and the drums were recorded to that, and I was coming up with a guitar part that went with it. And it just wasn't working uh, after the fact. And it just, no matter what I seemed to do, I added this piano part, uh, tried to do all, everything to get the thing to work, and it just it just wasn't knocking any of us out. And since the drums were already done, I had to come up with a plan for, well, what do we do? So. Anyway, here's a little bit of the initial, uh, this was the song as it was in the beginning. And that's um, that's a little of my uh, vocal before Rocky uh, replaced it, obviously. Uh, and you can kind of tell it's a different thing, but the drums are done. So that <laughs> so what I did was I came up with um, a different bass part, and this is the bass part that um, to replace that part. <laughs> So once I came up with that bass line there, it just it uh, created a different place for the song to go, and I, I redid the guitar, and I came up with a different, whole different guitar structure, and so the the drums were really the only thing that that stayed. So then you know you have what we know now as this. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. Again, here was the old one. So, totally different, and much better. I think everybody agrees on that. Okay, so let's go through a couple other things. So, there are some things in here, of, like when we go to the start of the verses. Uh, I came up with this kind of cool um, synth loop thing, and here's a little bit of it. So that's going on in the song, uh, especially leading into the uh, first first verse. And let's see if we look at the synth loop. Bear with me here for a second. Um, yeah, so there's there's the synth loop, and that happens uh, a couple times. And then there's some in the choruses too. So during the choruses, I kind of have them fading in and out. And it's tough to get those in time because they kind of do what they want to do and they don't stay always in perfect time. So there's... Some of you guys might not have even noticed that's going on <laughs> in the song. Uh, but yeah, it's in there. And then, okay, so let's take a look at uh, the first verse. Um, we obviously know what the bass is doing. Um, let's see, that's a scratch bass. We don't need to hear that. Let me get rid of that. So that's the bass guitar that I put down first with, uh, so the drums knew what to play to, um, as, as we always do. Um, okay, so have some guitars in here. Let's see what some of these sound like. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, that's one guitar. This would be a ribbon mic guitar that I uh, would have doubled with a different kind of flavor. Let's isolate that. So, let's see. So that's going on on one side, while on the other side there's sort of a, a counterpart. That's getting this error message. And that's that side. And here they are together. All right, so that's some of the intro guitars. And let's take a look at the chorus, what we've got going on on here. Let's see, there's some, uh, again, some of the synth stuff, and see what some of the guitars are doing through the choruses. <laughs> And then I think another sort of counterpart to that. So what I do a lot of times is uh, record different guitars, different mics, different amplifiers uh, to get a little bit of a, a, a spread of sonic structure. So you have something that's a little bit more clear and pristine against something that's a little dirtier. And there's always a challenge in the EQ for finding those spaces because you also have Tim's bass, which is very dirty and, um, and has a lot of mid-range and high end. So that's a lot of times where the guitar is living as well, you know, mid-range and dirtiness and high end. So, so you have to kind of carve some space. And I like to do it more just with the way the mic placement is than doing a ton of EQ. But a lot of times uh, to get things heard and to get things not mushing together, it requires a lot of a lot of work. Uh, now we also have on the choruses, I actually sang some of these harmonies. Let's see what this So yeah, there's actually some harmonies in this song. You might not have noticed. I don't have them up super loud because we're not like a, you know, we're not queen on the harmonies. But um, but they're there. Let's see another. Say that the stars That's actually Rocky doubling my part. So this would be the two of us together. Say that the stars will align. So that gives it a little, you know, a little bit more width and character because that's what it would sound like with me singing live doing that part as well so so we have that let's see on the second verse if there's anything unusual well the guitars are doing some different stuff on the second verse i know that so let's see what's happening there <laughs> Alright, so yeah, that's um, that's that part. I think uh, there might be one other thing I might be leaving out here. Let's see. Uh, no, I think that's good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of leave it there. I don't want to bore you guys to death, but so let's leave it there. And then um, I will pick up on part two and we'll discuss the outro and go through some of the violin and some of the uh, process that went through into making that and yeah all right well we'll see you next time